This is WJCL 22 Morning News. See us now. Good morning and thanks for joining us this half hour. I'm Ashley Garrett. Let's get straight to that certified most accurate forecast this morning with meteorologist Melissa Hall. Melissa, if you head outside this morning, it looks like it's shaping up to be a very pretty, gorgeous, suntastic Saturday. It is, Ashley. <laughs> it is going to be beautiful, <laughs> but we were talking about it earlier. Even when we headed out to our car in the middle of the night, oh, yeah. we couldn't catch a break from that heat at all. That's right. Yes, That's right. No. So today would be a good day to head to the beach, maybe the pool. Yes. Okay. And, cool. You know, we were talking about maybe even getting brunch later. Oh yeah. You do I was this? about that. Yeah, it sounds good. <laughs> but if you do it, you're going to want either a patio that has some covering or one that has a fan. Sunglasses are going to be a must this weekend, my friends. Look at the sky, and that's why you can see just a few clouds out there. So if you were thinking about maybe hitting one of the rooftop bars around town and catching some brunch this weekend, it is in the upper 70s. It feels like it's in the 80s. That humidity is continuing to be our force. So that brunch forecast sweltering will be in the 90s, thick and stale outside. Those rain chances aren't going to be bad. Actually, today we're not expecting any rain. Tomorrow you can dodge a spot shower, but it's going to be one of those late afternoon shower chances. So if brunch isn't in your forecast today, maybe it's in your forecast tomorrow. We're going to keep that sunshine around to start the day because we've got high pressure all around us. Now, how long is this weather pattern going to hold? We'll look at that full forecast here in a few minutes, Ashley. Melissa, thank you so much. Well, we turn now to some sad news this morning. We're honoring the life and legacy of civil rights activist and U.S. Representative John Lewis. Lewis died Friday months after announcing he had stage four pancreatic cancer. Well, Jared Hill is in our Washington bureau with some of the reaction that's been coming in. Congressman John Lewis has been known for the phrase good trouble, standing up to unjust systems. And that's exactly how he's being remembered this morning after his passing. On this bridge, some of us gave a little blood mm -hmm. to help redeem the soul of America. That was Congressman John Lewis back in March, marking the 55th anniversary of the Bloody Sunday March for voting rights in Selma, Alabama. The brutality against protesters, including Lewis, became a turning point in the civil rights movement. In Congress, John Lewis represented a district which makes up most of Atlanta, but his impact goes far beyond Georgia. During his time on Capitol Hill, Lewis pushed to renew the Voting Rights Act and fought to reunite children separated from their parents at the border. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi called Lewis, quote, a titan of the civil rights movement who was fearless in his pursuit of a more perfect union as a member of Congress. Republican Kevin McCarthy wrote that Lewis's patriotism, quote, urged him forward to fight for America. And former President Barack Obama said, quote, thanks to Lewis, we now have all our marching orders to keep believing in the possibility of remaking this country we love until it lives up to its full promise. So far, no funeral plans have been announced for Congressman John Lewis. Reporting in Washington, I'm Jared Hill. Jared, thank you so much. Well, local leaders are reacting to Representative Lewis's death on social media. Savannah Mayor Van Johnson says in part, quote, we are all walking on bridges that Representative Lewis built. May we never forget the sacrifice and pain that it took to build them. Representative Buddy Carter says John Lewis was a giant among Men who fiercely dedicated his life to fighting for equality and justice for all, and he fought for it until the very end. He adds that Lewis's wisdom, spirit, and friendship will be deeply missed. On Twitter, activist Stacey Abrams writes that Lewis was a defender of justice, champion of right, who always fought toward the light. And Senate candidate John Ossoff says Representative Lewis fought for people his whole life and put it all on the line over and over again to better this world for humanity. Georgia State Representative Carl Gilliard writes on Facebook saying in part in less than 24 hours, we have lost two of the most powerful icons in the civil rights movement and in the human rights movement today. Civil rights leader Reverend C.T. Vivian also passed away yesterday in his Atlanta home. He was also a close friend of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He was given the Presidential Medal of Freedom by former President Barack Obama back in 2013. Vivian was 95 years old. In Glenn County, the latest on the death of Ahmaud Arbery, all three men indicted for his murder have pleaded not guilty to all charges. Meantime, a separate investigation on sex charges begins, and it involves one of those three men. Travis and Gregory McMichael and William Bryan Jr. have all pleaded not guilty during their court hearing yesterday. Authorities say Arbery was shot and killed back in February. Gregory McMichael told police he suspected Arbery was a burglar. But video shows the McMichaels confronting Arbery before he was shot and killed. 
The attorney for the third man involved, William Bryan Jr., the man who says he recorded the video of Arbery's death, asked for his release on bond. Well, Arbery's mother asked for that plea to be denied. He does not think there's anything wrong with what he did. He wants this court to allow him to go home. I am asking this court to say no. Well, the court denied Brian Jr.'s plea. Brian Jr. is now also under investigation by the GBI for alleged sex crimes in Camden County. It is unknown at this time what exactly he's accused of doing. One man is dead after a crash on Highway 196 in Liberty County. Georgia State Patrol says it happened just before 9 last night. Troopers say a car and a truck collided at the intersection of Georgia 196 and John Wells Road. The car reportedly ran through a stop sign and crashed into the pickup truck. Troopers say the driver of the car died at the scene and his passenger was flown to the hospital. The driver of the truck is expected to be okay. Garden City Police need your help finding this missing teen. Police say 15-year-old Damani Stevens has been missing for two weeks. They say she was last seen in her Garden City home. If you see her, call police at the number you see there at the bottom of your screen. Well, let's talk coronavirus news now. The South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control is reporting close to 66,000 COVID-19 cases. The state has added more than 13,000 cases over the last week. In Buford County, there are more than 2,300 cases, and that's up more than 500 from a week ago. The Georgia Department of Public Health now reports more than 135,000 cases. The state added close to 24,000 new cases in the last week. In Chatham County, there are now more than 3,100 cases, and that's close to 800 more from a week ago. Guyton is officially requiring masks to be worn in the city, but this mandate conflicts with Georgia Governor Brian Kemp's order banning such requirements. So not all businesses are complying with the city. For example, the manager of Pizza Chef says her restaurant will follow state guidelines on mask usage. That means they are just recommended. The mayor of Guyton says the city's ordinance is about keeping people safe and not punishment. I'm not taking any kind of personal stand against Governor Kemp and Guyton's not standing up to the governor in, in some sort of battle way. This ordinance was what's best for our citizens. This ordinance is, it does not come from a place of power, it comes from a place of love. And at this time there is no intent to write anyone any tickets. At the same time to have passed an ordinance with no repercussions would be a waste of paper. Well, if the city does decide to hand out fines with this ordinance, it could cost violators up to $1,000. The U.S. recorded more than 77,000 positive cases of coronavirus just yesterday. And the White House has an unpublished report saying that many states should roll back reopenings, including the state of Florida. Well, that's where ABC's Ty Hernandez starts us off with one family's heartbreaking loss. As the coronavirus continues taking lives, this scene serving as a reminder of the challenges patients face yeah. fighting the virus alone. You don't recognize me with all this junk on my face. It is Sam. I love you, sweetheart. I love you so much. After months of not seeing his wife of nearly 30 years as she battled the coronavirus, 90-year-old Sam Reck risking his life to visit Joanne, wanting to say goodbye one last time. Finally getting to hold, hold your hand after all these months. Joanne passing away in that Florida hospital, one of the 26 states with a climbing daily death toll. It also happens to be one of 18 states in a new and unpublished White House task force document. States consider considered red zones where reopenings are recommended to be rolled back. A White House official saying the list was a guide for response efforts, not for the public to see. The document obtained by the Center for Public Integrity. We're in big trouble and ignoring science and hiding scientific input from the White House to the American people is not a way to move us forward. Another of the states mentioned in that report is Georgia. We shouldn't need a mass mandate for people to do the right thing. The state's governor, Brian Kemp, suing the city of Atlanta and its mayor for enforcing what Kemp himself says is the right thing to do. 
The governor has simply overstepped his bounds and his authority, um, and we'll see him in court. And for a third day in a row, a record number of deaths in Texas. Refrigerated trucks arriving in San Antonio, handling overflow from the morgues. While in Houston, hospitals are overwhelmed. Military doctors and nurses now deploying to Texas, Arizona, and California, too. Civilian reinforcements also heading to the front lines. Nurses ready to lend a hand. Ty Hernandez, ABC News, New York. Hi, thank you so much. Time check this morning. It is 840. Coming up, our chief consumer correspondent goes inside one of America's coronavirus hotspots. Hi, I'm Jeff Rossum. Coming up on Rossum Reports, we're hearing about cases spiking across the country. So we're about to show you what life is like inside America's hottest hotspot. Here at the water park, we're going to a shopping mall, even a nail salon. What's really going on next? You might not want to head to the water park right now, but you're going to want to try to find some way to get some relief from this heat. It is stifling outside. This shot from downtown Savannah shows you the clouds aren't going to be providing much blockage from that sun. Temperatures already in the upper 70s, feeling like it's in the low 80s. We'll have that full certified most accurate forecast after the break.